Well, hello everybody, it's Chef Andrea and it is Cookbook Corner time. Today we have not one, but two. That's right, Cookbook Corner for January is a BOGO. It's a twofer. Join me. Hey guys, welcome back to Cookbook Corner. It's been a while. Whew, you can tell I've already had some afternoon caffeine. I'm having more. This coffee is the most rigged up afternoon coffee in the history of rigged up coffees, and it's still really good. Mmm. God, afternoon coffee. Do you want to know how I made this terrible afternoon coffee? I took a Starbucks cold brew pod the liquid and poured it in a cup and added hot water. I think I've told y'all this hack before. And then I added sweetened Starbucks creamer to it. Hack job coffee. It is delicious. Okay. It's been a while since I've done a cookbook corner. The last two cookbooks that we did before we went on break for the holidays, by the way, welcome back. I hope you guys had an amazing Christmas holiday everything that you celebrate, New Year, we did. I am so recharged, we took such a nice break. Um, before we went on break, we did two cookbook corners, November, December-ish, that were cookbooks that were part of my are part of my collection, that are actually not cookbooks I cook out of, as weird as that is. They are really part of sort of the collectible part of this. Um, so the cookbook corners that we did were Ms. Beaton's, if you haven't seen that one, that is where I review a cookbook that the copy I have, the publication date, predates 1900. So it is truly an antique, and it's a really interesting little book to look at. The next one that we did was Modern Cuisine, where I talked about kind of the complete opposite, right? Came into the absolute future um, and the most modern looking cuisine I've ever seen or experienced and some of my thoughts about that and some cookbooks that kind of go with that. Today we're gonna do cookbooks that you want to cook out of. You want these in your collection because holy moly, are you gonna cook out of these cookbooks? So without further ado, let me just tell you who I am so screaming excited about. Um, and that is, I'm gonna start with the band over here. And so you can just see the back binder, Smitten Kitchen Cookbook by Deb Perlman. This has been in my collection since it was um, published and the publication date on this is 2014. So I've had it for a long time. Um, so Smitten Kitchen Cookbook, Deb Perlman. Deb Perlman is a food blogger uh, and lives, lives in New York. And at the time of the publication of this, lived in a New York apartment with a super tiny little kitchen. And the food this woman puts together so it says in her uh, opening here that she is not a trained chef. She's, in, I think it says something like, in fact, she's never even waited a table. Like she's just never been part of the, the restaurant world at all. Let me tell you what Deb Perlman is. She is a brilliant writer. She is so fun to read. And Deb Perlman has a way with recipes. She just brings the joy to cooking food. Um, you know, sometimes cooking is a drudgery and let's just admit, I think she said something in that, like, like cooking shouldn't be a drudgery. I think that's the actual word she uses, but uh, it's not just her philosophy. All right. It's one thing if she writes cooking shouldn't be a drudgery. Here's my cookbook. No, no, no. It is the foods that she creates, the recipes, the combinations, the styling that they make you want to cook. Okay. Um, we all have to cook, right? And as a culinary instructor, my entire Home Chef series premise is on encouraging home cooks to cook at home more. And what I like to do here are give you tools and tips and tricks that make it less of a chore and more enjoyable. But that's not what Deb Perlman's doing. No, what Deb does is make you an avocado toast that is so gorgeous that like you want to hit the brakes, turn around, go back to the grocery store and get more avocados because you realize that you have to make this avocado toast every day for the rest of your life. She has a way with food. You know how I explain this? Um, Deb, Deb or Bud's Smitten Kitchen Cookbook. I am a professional cook. 
I cook all day long. You see this stuff behind me? This is my class tonight, right? I'm going to be cooking. I've been cooking all afternoon. I'll be cooking all night tonight. Deb Perlman's recipes make me want to go home and cook some more. Deb Perlman's recipes make me want to cook on my weekends. She makes me want to bake cakes and ice them. I want you to know that that is like me making you want to start a running program um, after you've moved to the hills of Montana. Um, it, are you kidding me? She makes me want to cook. She makes me want to cook and she makes me want to eat. Enough. Let's do her cookbook. So I said to my husband recently, I pulled out the Smitten Kitchen cookbook because I'm going to tell you about the BOGO part of this, the buy one, get one, the twofer in this deal on Cookbook Corner today. I pulled this book back out because I had a little resurgence of Deb Perlman love in my life. And um, I said to my husband, here's a pack of stickies. Will you flag some recipes in there that you would like for me to revisit? They could be ones that we've done before, but I just haven't done them for a long time or ones we haven't done. So flag some pages for me and I'll see what I can do. This is what he hands me. <laughs> I said, Michael, why didn't you just hand me the book? I mean, the answer is you just want me to do everything in here. Like what isn't flagged? We can look at what isn't flagged. Let's look at what is flagged. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Uh, first and foremost, what I want you to tell you about her, she's got some great tips in the front. So read through the, those. I think in the Nick Malgieri episode of Cookbook Corner, I mentioned to you that when you are diving into a new cookbook writer's cookbook collection or recipe collection, it's really worth it if they've given you notes and tips in the front, read them. Because it may have something to do with the way that they measure. So if you're looking for the same results, you know, do they measure this way, that way? Um, when they substitute something, how do they do it, etc. So notes and tips, read those. The first recipe flagged is peach and sour cream pancakes. That's the first recipe my husband flagged, which frankly, you know, is there a pancake he's ever met that he didn't want? But cinnamon French toast he flags, that looks beautiful. Big breakfast latkes, latkes she, he flags, so potato pancakes with eggs. Baked ranchero eggs with blistered jack cheese and lime crema. I'm going to show you this picture. This is what I'm talking about with Deb Perlman. Do you see this recipe? This beautiful photograph? Baked ranchero eggs with blistered jack cheese and lime crema. The thing you got to know is that when you look at this, jalapeno, um, three cups of canned tomatoes, one white onion or garlic clove, salt and pepper, and canned black beans. You'll also need tortilla strips and some eggs. This big monstrosity of deliciousness that just looks beyond amazing. And then we hear the title is this incredible baked ranchero eggs with blistered jack cheese and lime crema. You know, you probably have most of this stuff in your pantry. See, that's a Deb Perlman classic. She throws a recipe at you. The title is just like, what is happening? I have to make that. And then you think, I don't know. What are we talking here? How many trips to a specialty market? And then you realize that of the 12 ingredients, you have 11 and a half of them. Um, one, of, one of the many things that's magic about Deb Perlman's um, recipes. Look at this. This is her avocado tartine with cucumber and sesame seeds. I mean, come on, y'all, it's sesame. It's avocado toast, right? How can I get excited? This is how I can get excited. Look at this thing. Do you not want to just stop what you're doing and go make this and then come back and finish watching Cookbook Corner? Like, you want to be eating this right this second, right? Her recipes, you guys. Um, but what I really adore, recipes are simple. Ingredients are accessible combos are so interesting. Like just by throwing that bright, fresh cucumber and then the crunch of the black sesame with your avocado toast, suddenly everything, it's a, it's a whole new game, right? For nothing. I already had the sesame seeds and who doesn't have a cucumber? Um, the other real magic with the Smitten Kitchen Cookbook and Deb Perlman are, is her writing. If all you ever did, which you can't, it's not gonna happen, but if all you ever did was just read the cookbook, you would be so entertained. And I am forever laughing out loud reading this cookbook. And Michael's like, what's funny about baked eggs? <laughs> well, read Deb Perlman, you'll find out. Look at this wild mushroom tart. I just wanna show you a picture of this thing. 
This makes me want to get up out of my chair and go thaw pie dough. I make my own pie dough. I just freeze it and knock out that incredible mushroom tart. Oh, it's gorgeous. She makes me want to eat. She makes me want to cook. Making me want to cook on my day off. That's like so. That's like what is that like? That's like 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 a house painter. And then somebody comes up with a with a line of paint <laughs> that is so compelling that this house painter paints houses all week long and then goes home and wakes up on Saturday morning and cannot help herself but go get some of this paint and paint her own house. You know what I mean? I mean, this is this is my job. This is labor. You would think I get it out of my system. Mm -mm, not when I'm reading Deb Perlman. This recipe is when I knew that I was in love. This is when I understood that I had hardcore fangirl crushing going on with Deb Perlman. And it's also the moment, and this happens to me a lot in my life, but it was the moment that I understood that if Deb Perlman could just, if I could just figure out how to meet her, she would realize that she loves me too. We're clearly meant to be very good friends. Now, I say that because that's um, that's true for a lot of people with me. Um, most of the podcasters that I watch, clearly if they met me, we'd be good friends. Certainly um, all the stars in Outlander, like if we met, I know they would really want to hang out with me. That's a different podcast. Let's talk about the day I fell in love with Deb Perlman. And that is the day that I looked at her sweet peas and shells Alfredo. So I'll show you a picture of this gorgeous thing. So it is pasta with Alfredo and sweet peas. And just something about that combination of the rich, creamy Alfredo sauce, the bright pop of green peas, and then she uses flat leaf parsley in this, and I use a mix of parsley and fresh mint. And I'm not sure where I got the fresh mint part, maybe because mint and peas on pasta is another dish. Anyway, this recipe right here, that's it. I looked at it and said, this, this woman, she and I, we are cut from the same cloth. I know that much. Um, I do a version of this recipe. I make my own fresh pasta and I make them into bow ties. And so I do bow ties with, so here's what I do when I get super chefy. It's all, this is all her inspiration. This is Deb Perlman. This is what she does to my brain. So I make my pasta, but I add a lot of cracked black pepper to the pasta dough. Then I make my bow ties. So now I have these kind of cracked black pepper bow tie pasta, and I make her Alfredo sauce and toss it with peas and mint and parsley. That's like one of those dishes that's, it's those moments where you're like, this is, this is it. This is why we're living. This is the whole point is this right now. Um, I'm sorry, but if a image of roasted chicken and olives doesn't just make you, I don't know, first of all, I just want to fly to the Mediterranean tomorrow, but to go directly to your kitchen and start roasting chickens. Look at this. Is that the most gorgeous thing? Do you see all the olives and the olive oil and the roasted chicken? I mean, the reality is she's roasting some chicken with olives here. This is the thing. Her stuff is simple, right? But it's elevated simple. She throws a twist into everything she does that just makes me go, I have to have that this immediate second. Okay, let's just move on to desserts for a moment because I just don't even know how to contain myself on this. Do you see that? That is a s'mores layer cake with a meringue icing that she's brulee'd. There is a part of my imagination that can stop for a minute and imagine cutting through that marshmallowy brulee top into that s'mores layer cake. And I have to take a minute to just like bring myself back to reality, take a breath, drink a sip of my rigged up coffee and move on with my life. Um, I adore her recipes. Here's what spawned the, hey, flag every recipe in here conversation with my husband. This one, I'd done a lot out of it and been inspired by a lot, like my, uh, my bow tie um, recipe that was so heavily inspired by this. So I'm out birthday shopping for uh, someone else when I realize that this little nugget 
has shown up at my bookstore. So Smitten Kitchen every day. Now, the Smitten Kitchen cookbook is every day. I, the, I just don't think there's much in here you couldn't pull off any given moments. One thing that she does so incredibly well, she makes her recipes super accessible. You're going to enjoy doing them. Here's this one every day. Look at right on the cover. Do you see that potato frittata thing happening there? Oh, God. I might. Then the back cover. Someone might have had to resuscitate me. Have I told y'all that I have a little bit of a sweet tooth situation? Do you see those little squares of cake with the most perfect icing and little sprinkles? Okay. This is the stuff that gets me so crazy about Deb Perlman. It's not that she's gonna do potato skins and it's not that she's gonna do potatoes with breakfast because that's exciting and we forget sometimes to do potatoes with breakfast. She's gonna do loaded breakfast potato skins. So she's taking my favorite, one of my absolute favorite food items on the planet, which is loaded potato skins, and she is letting me eat them for breakfast by adding an egg and baking the egg into the potato skin. I mean, she's letting me eat potato skins for breakfast. Y'all, that's genius. This is, I might be in love with Deb Perlman. I might have to talk to my therapist. This will make me get out of my chair and go find potatoes and eggs and make this happen. I don't care what time of day it is. I don't care what time of day it is. This has to happen. Loaded potato skins for breakfast. Um, she bakes the egg right in it. Uh, this particular book the polenta baked eggs with corn, tomato, and fontina. Um, my husband went crazy marking stuff in here too. I went crazy. You can already see all the stains. There's flour. I went crazy when I saw her sour cream coffee cake recipe. Lost my mind. I love coffee cake, and uh, my mom and I have always done the same coffee cake recipe for forever, and it's lovely. It's dense like this one is. It's baked in a, you know, like eight-by-eight eight little brownie pan. It's really dense, and it has that crumb topping on it. Um, but Deb Perlman, as usual, figures out how to make it even better, and her opening for this recipe is hilarious. I, I'm not reading it. You're going to go get this book, and you're going to love this. Absolutely hysterical. Um, but she's got a little trick here that she tells us she learned at a bakery when she was actually in high school, which is she's going to reverse the process and bake it upside down. And what happens is that super loose, crumbly topping that's full of cinnamon sugar and powdered sugar, instead of it like falling all over you, it ends up where it matters in your mouth. Um, this is a yeasted coffee cake. So it's got this just subtle sort of savory, bready side to it. And then that incredible incredible pop of that sweet topping. And the topping is like an inch thick. Uh -huh. um, okay. So I made this recipe um, shortly after I got the book. It was sometime in November. Mm. I'm thinking that it might have been over the Thanksgiving break that I made this coffee cake. I'm really not kidding here. I ate a piece of the coffee cake. We're on break. I go back to my little knitter's lounge. I'm knitting. I take a short nap. I wake up. I decide it's time for another bite of that coffee cake. I go get another piece of that coffee cake. This kind of pattern continues. And by like the fourth or fifth time that in the same afternoon slash evening, I was headed for that coffee cake. I said, you got to get rid of this coffee cake. Andrea, you have, this has to go. This can't be here. This, this can't be here. I texted her, my friend of mine, the friend that I bought this book for, a copy of it for her for her birthday. I said, this coffee cake. I got to get this coffee cake out of here. What am I going to do? She said, freeze it. I did. I wrapped it in saran wrap. I stuck it in Ziploc bags, and I shoved it in the deep freezer in the garage. I could feel something happening to me. I was not going to be able to not eat all 24 pieces of that coffee cake, and it makes a ton, by the way, which is cool if you're doing it for a crowd. And therefore I discovered it freezes beautifully. It did, it, I didn't even reheat it. I just, if we wanted coffee cake, we would just pull a chunk of the frozen cut 
coffee cake out of the freezer overnight and in the morning just eat it. I never warmed it back up. It was delicious. It is one of those recipes that you're like, really? Mm, I don't know. And then it blows your mind and you're like, oh yeah, Deb Perlman. Um, the party cake builder section where she's got these things happening. First of all, she tells you that she is not into fussy cake baking. Check this box for things I love about Deb Perlman. Um, then she tells you, here's how to build the cake. Here's the basic stuff. Here's um, how you're gonna bake it. Here's how you're gonna serve it. Um, here's some tips on frosting and decorating. Here are the flavors you can do. Spice cake, coconut cake, fudgy chocolate cake, golden vanilla cake. I take a breath again as I look at yet another picture. I mean, legit homemade birthday cake. Come on, that, come on. And if you haven't had that in a long time, you need to make you a birthday cake. I don't care whose birthday it is. Chocolate buttercream frosting, vanilla buttercream frosting, coconut buttercream frosting, cream cheese frosting. I already have marks all over this one because that's the one that I made from the minute I bought this book. Um, I did the spice cakes as uh, cupcakes, larger like muffins, bars, layer, and all four times I did the cream cheese frosting for it. Side note, I made a Bouche de Noel with my own chocolate sponge recipe that I've been doing Bouche de Noel's with forever and used this cream cheese buttercream for it because it was amazing. <sighs> That's what I'm talking about. Y'all, somebody needs to do this and invite me over. Can we have a cake party? Look at that. I want to have a cake party. Everybody makes one of these cakes. And then we bring urns of coffee, mm -hmm. hot tea. What else would you need? You'd need some sparkling water, right? To kind of cleanse the palate between the cakes. And we just do a cake fest. Just go crazy. All right. So do you see how I sound like a crazy person? That is what these books do to me. All I do is cook all the time. And she's got me losing my mind over throwing a cake party at my house. She has a way with food that makes you want to make food. Um, you want to eat it. You want to make it. There are so many beautiful desserts in here, you guys. I'm trying to think if there was anything else that I really just couldn't live without showing you. Because um, you're going to have to do it all. You're going to be like my husband. You're going to end up flagging every page. So don't flag any of them. Just start cooking. Um, sandwiches, tarts, and flatbreads. I just want to show you her cover pizza, which is very similar to a pizza that I ate when I was in London one time, where they sent out a pizza with red sauce, like a smoked red sauce and grilled chicken and arugula and fried egg right in the middle. So everybody got a little bit of the fried egg right at the tip of their, their slice of pizza. It was so delicious. Um, it's heaven. The reading in here is hilarious and adorable and you'll fall directly in love with her. You're not gonna be able to help yourself. Um, I, as I said, fangirl on her pretty hard. Um, I just love, I just, you know, she writes the stuff that I would write if I could write. Do you know what I mean? Do you know those kind of writers that when you read them, you're like, is she, is she in here? How did she get in here? Um, she sees the food world the way I'd like to see the food world. She reminds me to see the food world the way I would like to see the food world. She makes me want to cook. She makes me want to eat. I've never done a recipe in here that didn't work out beautifully. But the other thing I wanted to mention about her cookbooks is that they're very forgiving. And so if you don't have feta, but you do have jack. If you don't have jack, but you do have burrata. It, you'll be, sub out what you got going, right? So she's using Kalamata olives and you've got some really nice Spanish green olives. Cool, you're, you're, all is gonna be well. Uh, they're very forgiving recipes. So I take the general premise of what's happening there and then sort of tweak it out uh, on my own. Even with her spice cake, um, because we were doing them so holiday specific, uh, I think I threw, I upped the spice somehow. Maybe I made it more pumpkin themed or more cinnamony or more gingery. I don't really remember exactly, but I upped the quotient a little bit on one of the batches because we were going so specific holiday versus, you know, just every day walking around spice cake. Um, I love Smitten Kitchen. 
recipes. I want Deb Perlman to go on like a, I don't know what, like a grand tour and I can go watch her in action. She gets, I just want her to sit on stage in her like black turtleneck and black slacks and just talk about, you know, spilling tomatoes in the kitchen and making the perfect frittata at the same time. Um, she's just a genius with writing and with food. She makes you want to cook. She makes you want to eat. That's a really, really big deal for a cookbook. If you have cookbooks on your shelf that you are attracted to for some reason, and you realize you've never actually, top to bottom, done a recipe out of them, that's usually a little bit of a red flag to me. Now, when we were talking about Ms. Beaton's, I mean, um, a boiled calf's head, en gelé, eh, you know, I'm cool that I passed on that. Um, when we're talking about modern cuisine, well, like I said, you know, when you've got to get out um, a freeze dry machine and xanthan gum to, you know, make an appetizer, it might be a little uh, inaccessible. But um, I have a lot of cookbooks. You know, I told you I've purged. A lot of the ones that I purged out were ones that I was attracted to the cover or the concept. And then when I got into them, for some reason, I would get shut down in the actual utilizing of. So, um, yeah, so I would say take a look at your cookbook collection. If you are looking to do a little bit of a purge, that's one thing you could look for. What are the ones that are still squeaking when you open them? You know what I mean? You just, they've gotten no love. There's a reason for it. Whatever it is, you may not even need to discover. Just know when you get a hold of a good one, they are covered in tomato sauce within 15 minutes of coming into the door. Um, Papers are falling out of them. Look at Deb Perlman. I'll show you her on the cover. She's so pretty. I told you, I think I'm in love with Deb Perlman. Isn't she the cutest? She's just so cute. And she's got this cute family and, but whatever. That has nothing to do with amazing cream cheese frosting. Let's be clear. Uh, her recipes are gorgeous and her writing is so fun. Deb Perlman, Smitten Kitchen. Find her blog and start subscribing to that, but be careful. God, all I can tell you is, if you read her stuff, you're going to cook her food. It's going to happen within 24 hours. So, like, if you just started a 72-hour juice cleanse, you need to hold off until hour 80, okay? And then you can crash back into the world um, because there's no way you can read Deb Perlman's writing um, or look at her recipes without immediately wanting to throw down whatever it is you are currently doing and go make that thing and then eat it in the kitchen by yourself, right out of the oven. That's what I do. Like her food is irresistible. Smitten Kitchen, Cookbook Corner. All right, guys, it's so great to be back. Happy New Year to everybody. Um, and we've got a few cool announcements coming with the YouTube channel. We'll get those up as well. But at the moment, if you're a Gumroad subscriber, thank you. Uh, your podcasts are still hanging out in Gumroad and the current one is on salt. Uh, next up, olive oil, and I've got a bonus one for my Gumroad subscribers on marinades, so keep your eye out for that. If you're here on YouTube finding me, please do like and subscribe. It definitely helps us out uh, with seeing what content you're loving, and if you've got any requests um, for the cook for the Q&A with Chef A, feel free to email us those as well. Cookbook Corner, um, I'll bring you another couple of favorites next time around. Meanwhile, get Smitten Kitchen get cooking, check out Deb Perlman's blog and feel free to comment below or find me on Instagram where I'm A Chef's Cooking Studio, Facebook where I'm A Chef's Cooking Studio and shoot me some pictures of your Smitten Kitchen results. I'd love to see them. So, all right. I hope everybody has a super delicious day. We'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.